Spicer Forum, downtown Milwaukee, home of the Golden Eagles of Marquette. Jackson State and Marquette ready to tip it off. Tigers won their last game, a win on the road at Louisiana. They're without Gabe Watson, their leading scorer, though, and Dylan Taylor will take his spot. Cam Jones gets a start for the Golden Eagles, who are off to a really nice 6 and 1 start with wins over Illinois, Ole Miss, and West Virginia. Rich Waltz, Pete Gillen, Desmond Parnell, Coach Gillen. What type of tempo we got tonight? Up tempo, chucking and ducking, heaving and leaving fast, a lot of fun. Stick with us on CBS Sports Network. And a team that needs a little confidence early in this game, and that's Ken Evans Jr. handling the basketball. Jackson State out of the swack. They are opening their season with 12 consecutive road games. Unbelievable. They want to swing the ball side to side, then go off the dribble. James off a screen. Swing it to a wing, into a corner. Shot clock down at five. First possession of the night. Three on the way, and it's off. James misfiring. That guy can do some rebounding down low. Freeman, Chris Freeman, along with Javius McKinnis, a good rebounding Jackson State team, and that's one issue for Marquette this year. Exactly. And minus two average, and they're rebounding. Nice pass and so Marcel to Kerr Quick. Jackson State up the floor. Freeman had a shot, turns it down. This is McKinnis. Averaging a double-double, and he bangs one off the back iron. There's that rebounding we talked about. Yep, they got to do a better job in the glass. Got to get in the mud, get in the glue. They didn't box out that time. Shaka Smart already in a defensive stance yep. in his first year. James down the lane, and a floater goes. Jonas James, good little point guard, six foot, 160 pounds. Very quick, big key to their team against the pressure by Marquette. He's got to be the glue, keep them together. Four big transfers for Marquette. Three of them getting the start here. Ooh. Marcel falling away, and the rebound to Javius McKinnis. Do you know, Rich, one of the best rebounders in the country, McKinnis, 13 boards last year, second in the nation. This year got a double-double, he slipped a little bit. 12 points, only 10 rebounds, which is still fabulous. Evans misses the three. Justin Lewis with the ball, the most improved Marquette player. Pull up jumper, and that's strong. McKinnis already has three rebounds in this game. I'm gonna buy stock in McKinnis, I'll tell you. He's a quiet terminator. Doesn't say much, Rich. All he does is get things done. Jackson State was 0-5 before winning at Louisiana. Louisiana is not a bad team, so that was a huge step forward in their last game. Great win, 75-70 on the road. Great win. McKinnis against Quet. Backing him in. Shot blocked, shot clock. Violation. Wayne Brent has been there nine years, terrific coach, legendary high school coach, and then on into college, assistant to Rod Barnes at Ole Miss for a long time. And Shaka Smart in his first year after six years in Texas, three NCAA tournaments weren't good enough there. Terrific run at VCU, five NCAAs there in six seasons. Of course, a Final Four in 2011. Yeah, great career for Shaka Smart. And we're really impressed, you and I watching Wayne Brent practice today, Rich. He was fabulous. He talked in a low demeanor. He's a great teacher. This is a team that won the SWAC regular season title last year. Tyler Kolick, three on the way. Missed it, late clock shot. Lewis with the rebound. Boy, he's active. Kolick, the transfer from George Mason. Jones launches, hits. Into the starting lineup is Cam Jones, the freshman out of Corona, Tennessee. One, two, two, three quarter court press. That's the way we want to do. Turn them over. Have their defense get their offense going. Jones, an ambitious three there with a man in his face. He only shoots when he has it. You know, that's the good thing about him. But he's very <laughs> confident, very aggressive, a terrific young player. How will Jackson State get their points tonight? That's a good question. Gabe Watson, 15 a game, is out. Evans follows his shot. That's how they can get their points on the offensive glass. McKinnis again. Yeah, that's one thing Marquette's got to prove on, Rich, as you mentioned. And that's another thing. 
Marquette trying to hold on to the basketball. How about Jackson State? Another road game in the Big East tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah tough. Here we go. Golden Eagles penetrate next pass. Quit throwing it home. Let the big dog eat. Get him the ball. Nice pass inside. High percentage shot, Rich. We got a game in Milwaukee. One point ball game. Marquette a 5 4 lead over Jackson State. Rich Waltz, Pete Gillen, Desmond Purnell will join us shortly. This is year one here in Milwaukee at Marquette for Shaka Smart. So far, so good. Shaka Smart is back. Had a great run at VCU. Went to the Final Four in 2011. He's going to try to bring the glory days back to Marquette. He's going to do it. He's a great coach. All right, if you want to go back and, and find his glory days, remember Shaka Smart got his start at VCU in a terrific run, including a Final Four run in 2011, five NCAA tournaments in six years. On to Texas, three NCAA tournaments, but didn't win a tournament game. And on to Marquette. And he has arrived. He has four transfers that are getting a lot of minutes. And so far, they have some really nice resume building wins over number 10, Illinois. They beat Ole Miss, and they beat West Virginia. They lost to St. Bonaventures in a tournament championship down in Charleston. Right now, Jackson State's got to take their time, slow the game down, because they don't have the horses to run up and down. All right, they got to be patient, try to play the game in the 60s. Marquette wants a game in the 80s because they're more talented, they're deeper, and they're more athletic. This is Chance Moore who's into the ball game. He can score. Another offensive rebound. James launches a three. That's way off. And the rebound taken down by Olivier Maxence Prosper, who is out of the starting lineup but off the bench and spinning into the lane as we speak. That shot's blocked. And Moore has the ball. You liked him this afternoon, Rich, right? The practice, Chance Moore. Now, Chance Moore, transfer from Wichita State. McGinnis, tough catch, Kreff in there tight. Another tip. Right now, Jackson State is dominating the offensive glass. Exactly. Got to get more guys in there for Marquette. Too many guys are hanging out, get ready on the break. Oh, that's a nice look. Great pass. Cam Jones, Quet wasn't ready for it, wasn't and it's a turnover. It. Yep, it's okay. He knows it. No problem. It's a, it, it is an interesting game for Marquette. They've got Wisconsin coming up this weekend. That's a huge game, obviously. Jackson State is just one and five, but there this is a one and five team that won their conference last year, just beat Louisiana on the road. That's a great win. Sunbelt team, one of the best in the Sunbelt. All right, it was a great, great win. They came in second in the West Division in the Sun Belt. So playing 12 games on the road, Rich, is unbelievable. I played as a head coach fourth year, four games in a row at Xavier, and that was a night. It's your guy, there Chance he is. Moore. Chance Moore, 6'8", 200-pounder out of Louisville. He did not play in the Louisiana win. He had a, a sore back. Very talented. Kick out, Mitchell. Into the corner, Prosper. Three-point shooting is not Marquette's strength. Only 32% from downtown, Rich, so they got to go inside more. Got to go inside and drive the basketball. Get to the rim. Ball fake, fall away, and it's short. He likes to shoot. He's their one score really out there. Oh. Prosper out in front. 6'8", yeah. 220, and very mobile, the transfer from Clemson. That's one of the things that they're worried about when he talked to Coach Brent this morning is the transition offense of Marquette. Got to get back. Marquette, a win over Northern Illinois their last time out, and the best thing about that win was the bench of the Golden Eagles. Is a foul. Prosper and McGinnis is going to go to the line. Push it ahead. Nice finish inside for the big guy. Prosper. Here we go again. Boom! Throwing it home. Very talented young man coming off the bench. Here we saw three looks. Each look gets better. This is a guy that entered the transfer portal in the offseason and had a lot of interest from Power 5 teams. 
Javius McKinnis. He's a local kid, as you see, that coming out of the game is more a local kid, and he decided to come back about a month after. The coaches knew he was in the portal. They knew he had offers. He walked back into the office of Wayne Brent and said, I'm coming back. He had 20 offers in the portal. Five power league teams. So a lot of teams want him. He's the second leading rebounder in the country. They can't keep giving up dunks like that. Also, Igadaro. And this bench is providing energy once again yep. for Marquette. We're seeing a 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court press. <laughs> Prosper can't save it. It stays with Jackson State. Finally tonight, we can introduce Desmond Purnell. Hi, Desmond. Guys, Shaka Smart, he wants his players to remember three letters. EGB stands for Energy Generating Behaviors. That's the aggressive defense, slapping the floor, cheering for his teammates. Coach Smart was not happy Saturday with his team's EGB against Northern Illinois. That's why he took out all five starters less than four minutes into the game. And I can tell you, following that previous timeout, he's still demanding more energy from his players. Well, that's, a, that's okay, Desmond, because we brought the king of EGB, and that's Pete Gillen. <laughs> Uh, uh, energy generating behavior. You are a walking energy generating I, guy. Rich Desmond, I make coffee nervous, but it's okay. I'm trying not to lose too many sponsors tonight, Rich. That's my goal. But there's Shaka Smart. When I was at University of Virginia, I came over and spoke at a clinic. A class guy, great coach. He's going to do a wonderful job here uh, for Marquette. That's Justin Lewis back in. And he, like a lot of other coaches we talked to already this year, have said, hey, look, it's great to have transfers. But it's not easy to blend them all together because they have had roles. Taylor on a short clock misses the three. They have had roles on those other schools that we don't really necessarily need them in those roles. We may need them to do something different. Exactly. They might fit at one school, but not necessarily the other. They might be a star at one, right? And then a role player here. Or a role player at one, a star. He said it's, it's not an automatic transition. This is Stevie Mitchell, freshman out of Reading, Pennsylvania. Really good, really high ceiling. And he's really fouled. He's going to the line. Mitchell, 11 points, 4 assists in the win over Northern Illinois. And he fueled that bench that scored 35 out of the 80 points. It's an interesting mix, this Marquette team because you've got the, the grad transfers Daryl Marcel out of Maryland Prosper out of Clemson Quet from Oklahoma Colin from George Mason and then just about everybody else is a freshman yeah nine newcomers rich as you know and uh, some veterans some young guys so uh, it's not easy but if anybody can blend it together it's Shaka Smart he's a great communicator now we're gonna see a one two oh, he's gonna make it see if they still press that's going to be a Jackson State ball. Yeah. Jackson State's, they got to do all little things, Rich, to hang around the first 10 minutes. Can't give Marquette any more opportunities. Jackson State out rebounding Marquette 12 7. Moore with a left hand can't finish. Lewis with a scoop. And again, that's 13 rebounds already for Jackson State. Yeah. That's too many. Mitchell a floater. Ball's out of bounds and it stays with Marquette. David Joplin getting set to check in for the Golden Eagles. Yep. And so far Jackson State even with Marquette and a head on rebounds and maybe a head on energy. Yep. Once again, you got Wisconsin coming up. That's the biggest game of the year in a lot of circles for Marquette. So, uh, once again, that Lewis gets it in touch. Right now, right now. Mitchell. Yeah, Jackson State struggling a little bit on their own defensive glass right now. And you can see just what Desmond talked about. Marquette slapping the floor, trying to generate yep. some energy right now. One, two, two, three quarter court zone press back to man to man. Trying to get deflection. Wide open for a three. Whoa. Banging it home is Ken Evans Jr. 
Jackson State won't be intimidated in this atmosphere. They play big teams on the road. That's all part of this 12 game road trip to start the season. Uh, they got tough kids, a great coach. So they're going to, as you mentioned before, Rich, they were co champions of the SWAC last year. Them in Prairie View AM. Greg Elliott in the ball game. Mitchell driving, scooping, and scoring. Nice fake, to pump fake, got his man in the air and drove. Mitchell's their highest rated newcomer at Marquette, so they expect great things of him. A little better job of handling the press. Moore is a scorer, he's hit a three. Jackson State's got to swing the ball quicker, side to side, drive the ball. Evans drives, kicks, picks. Darius Hicks, who's only averaging a point and a half. That's his first three-point attempt this year. Strange things happen when you come to a NBA arena, Rich. Jock is not happy. Floater. Nice shot. And that's Igadaro. And it's even at 16, halfway through this first half. Yep. Taylor driving. Taylor with a reverse. Bob Shaka now get out of the zone press, go back to man to man press. Change of pace. Mitchell throws it away. Jackson State has the lead. Jackson State has the momentum. Somebody presses you, attack the press. Nice crossover, nice move inside. Heck of a finish by Taylor. Stay with us. Jackson State on a roll. Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ford, built Ford Proud, and by AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, and secure. Two great Jackson State Tigers, Purvis Short, great Golden State Warrior, Rocket and Annette, Lindsey Hunter from Jackson State. He was a terrific NBA player. 17 seasons. This was him in college. This was an NIT against Ray Allen and the Huskies in stores, and he absolutely torched them. Everywhere. Inside, outside, and Jackson State upset him in the first round. Hunter went for 39 in that game. Wayne Brett, the head coach, Jackson, Mississippi. This is the fourth largest, fourth largest university in Mississippi. Yep. Founded in 1866, about 10,000 enrollment. It's a great academic school. Coach Wayne Brent has three degrees, two undergraduate degrees, and a master's in education. So it's a class program, great academically, and a, a fun place to play. And as a reminder, if you're just joining us, they're playing without their top scorer. Gabe Watson is out, a wrist injury. He went for 22 in the win at Louisiana. But right now, they lead Marquette in the Big East. You see the shooting, 18-16 start. Still with the press. Yep, still with the press, 2-2-1. Two, two, they changed your press a little bit. They were going 1-2-2, two, two, now to 2-2-1. Two, two, they're doing that to get them to make Jackson State think. The more teams think, the slower their feet get rich. They lose some of their athleticism, all right, and their aggressiveness. Chance Moore is open, sets, launches, comes up short. And the rebound to Daryl Morsell, the transfer from Maryland. Colick driving, George Mason product into the corner. And that's Amarian Ellis. Jackson State will give him those threes, Rich, all day long, right? Okay, only shoots 32% from downtown. That's a turnover yeah. for Jackson State. Yeah. Gabe Watson, a junior. Transfer from Tulane, kind of watch shoot around forlornly today, flexing that right wrist. He was in uniform for practice. He was not in uniform to warm up for this game. Yeah. No. Jackson State's got to take better care of the basketball. Quet. Nice pass. Good touch from Ellis. That's what they got to do. Keep going inside. Scoring the paint. Marquette getting their scoring in tight. 14 of 18 in the paint. Jackson State's going to take their time, swing the ball, slow the tempo down. He won a game in 60s. Not like that. Lewis trying to save it. Quef. Kolick launches. Missed it. Another rebound there. Great rebound. Right now, 
Jackson State is a plus five on the rebounding end and has seven offensive boards. The saying, a hungry cat hunts best. These guys are hungry tigers. They're attacking. Great ball fake. No finish, though. Evans missed. Another offense. Pump fake. Tennis. Quack with a Got steal. Hit. Got a call at. Got hit. I'm not sure if the ball was deflected or not. Shaka Smart wants the basketball. We'll decide when we return. We're so proud at CBS Sports to bring you the inaugural HBCU All-Star Game. Final Four Sunday, April 3rd, 4 Eastern, live on CBS. Game will be played at UNO Lakefront Arena in New Orleans, site of the Final Four. Best talent from the four historically black athletic conferences. Tickets on sale, arena.uno.edu. And on the watch list for that game, Jackson State's Jonas James. They might want to get Javius McKinnis on that watch list as well. He's been terrific in this one, and so has Jackson State. And then we check in with Desmond Purnell. Desmond? Guys, the Jackson State coaching staff encouraging their players to play with more force, especially down low. They said that the referees are not blowing the whistles, so do not expect a bailout call. Play with more force, especially down low, guys. All right, thank you, Desmond. They're certainly doing it on the rebounding. They have a decided advantage so far. And they had eight offensive rebounds because Marquette's not boxing out. You gotta put your body on somebody. Get in the glue and put your body on somebody. Screen out. Marcel travels. Turnover. Marquette. Marquette has 14 turnovers a game. They average, Rich, so why? Because you got so many new players. Nine new guys come in, a lot of freshmen. So they're still learning to play with each other and take care of the basketball. Full court pressure, but no longer the zone. Little man pressure up the floor. Marion Ellis on Jonas James. James blows by left hand and scores. Yeah, he's a key guy. I think the biggest key to the game is right, Jonas James handling the pressure by Marquette. Ellis kind of reluctantly oh. drives the ball. Oh, and a block. Wow. Not on McKinnis. McKinnis got the block of the ball. But a block down below. All right, here's video evidence of the dominance on the board. Great job on the glass. You don't box them out, they make you pay. Great move. Nice finish inside. Great job on the glass by Jackson State. Not sure that's how you draw it up. Rich, it's 8:37 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right. The banks are open, make a deposit, get some interest. He works on that shot every day, the bank free throw. Right, well at least the ATMs will work thanks to <laughs> Fiserv, right? That, there we go. Some guys, to show that it was really bank credit back to second one. But, uh, you, you made the point early that the longer Jackson State stays in this game, and you can see the rebounding advantage right now, the more confidence they're going to get. There's 7.22 left in this first half. Yep, and hanging around. Even at 20. Change of press by Marquette. 1-2, one, 1-1, one, one, zone press. Jackson State, there's the run. Oh! Two hands! Don't be so mean, don't play so rough. Javius McKinnis! He threw that one to the moon. Oh, that was like a space shuttle. <laughs> that was. Kolick driving, that's blocked. That's McKinnis again. Jackson State has come to play without their best score on the road the entire season. And here they are with a two-point lead. Got to attack the press, throw it over the press, throw it up to the moon. McKinnis, boom, throw it home, big fella. Best rebounders in the country, Avian McKinnis. They have absolutely kept this crowd out of it. This is Lewis looking for his first there points. We go. And there they are. Yep. Justin Lewis is averaging 17 a night his first two. Marquette just play good D, don't gamble, keep in front of you. Jackson State, swing the ball side to side. Get it to the big guy. All right, get it inside to McKinnis, your best player. Hicks falling away. And a rebound taken by Lewis, who's averaging eight boards a game. Not a good shot, fade away, one-handed push, Rich. That's a pop shot. Colin, oh, McKinnis almost saved it. Tremendous player. I can see why 20 schools, right, when he went in the portal, 
after the season. Try to get him. Five power five schools. Kolick to the drive. Boom! Not in my watch. Pete, we don't have the power to do this, but if we did, I, I would name him to that all-star game right now. Oh, boy. I, I have no juice, but I, he certainly deserves to be in that game. Second leading rebound in the country last year, Rich. 13 a game. This year, double-double. So, a fabulous young play. Doesn't say much. This plays. It does, does work. Lewis, step back. That's a three. And oh. that's pure. Yep. Averaging 34% from distance. Yep. Last year, he only made seven threes all season. This year, coming into this game, he has 11 already. So, he worked hard. The offseason, we said before, he got into the weight room, to the body shop, and much better condition. James bodied, speaking of, and that's a foul. Stevie Mitchell. We've seen this across the country. You've got a, a Power Five team. I'm, look, the Big East is a Power Five conference, right? It is, of course. I'm, I'm not, I, I don't care what it's labeled. It's a big time right. it's, conference. It's silly, it be a power silly five. to use that, yeah. but it is used in basketball uh, yep. parlance. It is a power But, power but here's Marquette in this beautiful NBA arena with a big crowd. They've had some huge wins already. And Jackson State is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them right now. Chance Moore, Lucy Goose, we saw him at practice today. He's got game. Played for Greg Marshall at uh, Richard R. State, as you mentioned, Rich, before. So big time player. Quack, tied up, stolen by Taylor. Little over five minutes left in a very surprising first half. Yep. Jackson State without their top score on the road. They're challenging Moore to shoot against Lewis. Good matchup. Justin Lewis against Moore. Oh, that one almost went down. McKinnis. There he is, that rebounding machine. He's got six. Another offensive rebound as well. Clock is down. Taylor. Moore. Deep. Moore oh. hits a three. Wow. 27 25, Jackson State. This team plays with a big heart. A lot of courage. Lewis is trying to settle things down for Marquette. Spinning. Yeah. Oh. McKinnis gets another one. McKinnis is pumped up. He had two blocks last game when he beat Louisiana Lafayette. That's his third one. He had two last game when he beat Louisiana Lafayette, 16 points. Look at him. He's juiced. By stocking him. He's tremendous. He could play anywhere, that young man. Six re his rebounds. Six rebounds and three blocks. Five points. And all of his plays seem to be big energy plays. Yeah. Terrific player. Jackson State was picked third preseason, as you know, Rich, in the SWAC conference. Texas Southern was one. Prairie View A&M was two, and they were picked third. And uh, terrific team. Playing 12 straight games on the road, as you mentioned, is uh, a nightmare. But it's going to make them tougher for conference play. Jones whips it. Lewis, a three. Uh-uh. Tip back out, Colin. Jones. Corner to Mitchell, and he was out of bounds. That's a turnover. Well, look, it's out of necessity that a lot of these schools out of the SWAC and, and other smaller conferences go on the road because that fills the budget. And Shaka Smart, places like Marquette, they've been to Illinois, they've been to Marshall, they've been to Indiana, they went to Louisiana and won. Yep, make a lot of money for other programs, for their school in general. But uh, these players play with a big heart, tough as nails. That shot altered, may have been blocked. Marquette with an opportunity here. The time to take the lead. Gets to take their time. Get the ball to Justin Lewis, their best player. Don't force the shot. Jones to Mitchell. Kick out Kolek. His three. Line drive. And a rebound to Jackson State. Now, That's got to be a concern. Take your time. Got to be a concern for Marquette. They are last in the Big East in rebounding margin, and they're getting out rebounded by a one in five team, Jackson State. Yep. And you got to be worried about too many three point shots. You're not. They're not going unless you're wide open. Oh my God. Moore has no confidence. No. No. Feels like Levy is going to shoot it. I don't blame him. He's a good player, but he's got to calm down a little. 
Jones driving, dishing, and a foul. No bucket. Free throws when we get back for Oso Igadaro. If you thought this was a layup, got news for you. Jackson State by two. 2021 Davis Cup continues tomorrow morning, 10 Eastern, quarterfinal action, Serbia to Kazakhstan. Let's see who advances to the semis. A chance for this year's Davis Cup right here on CBS Sports Network. Javius McKinnis get to know this guy. I'm up, up and away, oh my gosh. I thought that was out of the building. You don't box him out, he makes you pay. Tremendous offensive rebounder. Very talented young man, he's an excellent shot blocker. Plays with emotion, fired up. That had to be the best day in many years for Wayne Brent when McKinnis walked back into his office after a month in the transfer portal and said, I've decided to stay home. He thought he was gone. We spoke to him this afternoon. He said, I thought he was gone for sure. A lot of big time schools wanted him. And you can see why. Tremendous player, but he's a you know, quiet young man, lives right outside of Jackson and wants to he loves he doesn't trust everybody. He does, you know, and he uh, Coach Wayne Brent's a, a class guy. Great coach, so you stay at home, and that's, that's great for Jackson State. It's wonderful. Wayne Brent and the Tigers with a one-point lead. Big ceiling for this guy, also Igadaro, the freshman out of Chandler, Arizona. They really like him. Seven rebounds now, four of them offensive for McKinnis. That's your field goal shooting. Neither team is lighting it up. Well, Kent goes back to man to man because their press was hurting him a little, Rich. It was scoring off the, the pressure defense. McKinnis hungry. And that one misfired. Yep. Tough shot. He's off balance, fading away. <laughs> Gets another one. Who is that man? That's four blocks. McKinnis is like a goalie in soccer. Now, Bill Russell, the great player for the Celtics, a little bit update myself, he blocked and kept it in bounds. So that's McGinnis's next charge. Try to learn to block it and keep it in bounds and go off on a fast break for Jackson State. As you've noticed, this is the Milwaukee Bucks floor. Of course, the world champion Milwaukee Bucks. Marquette has their own floor, but it was damaged this summer. In storage, it was damaged. And so... They say that it will be back soon, but it's not a bad floor to play on, right? No, it's beautiful. Lewis. Now McKinnis was loading up yep. for another block. Yep. And he's going to get the foul. Nice pass inside. <clears throat> First personal. And a fifth team foul on Jackson State. Nice pass inside by Mitchell. Good pump fake. Justin Lewis has improved so much. Last year, Rich, we saw him. Eight points a game. Right now he's averaging 17 points plus, so uh, really worked hard over the summer. He's gotten better and better. Great tournament in Charleston. And of course, Marquette got all the way to the championship, lost to a really good St. Bonaventure team. And Lewis was on the all-tournament team, 21 against Ole Miss, double-double in the championship game against St. Bonnie's, and 17 and 11. And a steal. Mitchell got it right back. Cola kicks, corner, Mitchell driving. Good rotation, Jones finds Mitchell, balls kicked with three on the shot clock. Great passing by Marquette, terrific defense by Jackson State. Playing with a big heart, you gotta love the toughness and the grit of Jackson State. Marquette is very young. Nine new guys. A lot of freshmen, Rich, so they're in a learning situation. You got Wisconsin coming up on Saturday, so could be looking ahead. Lewis blows right by Fouls, and he gets an opportunity after missing a couple free throws to get back to the line. That's where they got to go. When you're missing your outside shots right now for Marquette, go inside. Get it to the big guy and get it to Justin Lewis. Nice spin move. We're going to attack the cup. Sometimes there's there's really advanced analytics, and sometimes there's just numbers that jump off the page. And if you're wondering how a, a team that's getting out-rebounded by their opponents can be 6-1 and one with wins over Illinois, Ole Miss, and West Virginia, it's free throws and made free throws. They are averaging 18 points a game from the line. Yep, doing a good job. 
All right. It helps them get into their press. One, two, one, one zone press by Marquette. They're trying to get their defense, get their offense going, because their offense is struggling a little bit at half court. Evans breaks the press. Yeah. Jackson State, take your time, try to anesthetize Marquette, put him to sleep. I don't know what the word means, Rich, but I know you're a good student, so I figured that's right. I think that was proper usage, Coach. <laughs> Jones with a steal. Nicodaro. Lewis in the paint. Jones. Nicodaro. The biggest lead for either team in this game has been three, and Marquette is back up by two. Big minute and 15. Good timeout by Coach Brent. You're down two, you don't want it to explode to go seven or eight. So they're hanging around. The young Marquette team. We'll see what happens. Stay with us. AT&T at the half is coming up. We'll hear what Chris Walker, John Rothstein, and Brent Stover think of Jackson State's first half. Scores and highlights from around college basketball. AT&T at the half. Rich Waltz, Desmond Purnell is on the sidelines. The coach, Pete Gillen, beside me. We are in downtown Milwaukee in this beautiful arena, home of the Bucks, five-serve forum. It is year four for Marquette as their home building. Rich, I'd go inside to my best player, Javius McKinnis, get him the basketball. Evans drives, and he finishes. And Jackson State draws even with a minute left in this first half. Another rebound for Javius McKinnis and a chance to take the lead for Jackson State. McKinnis with a screen, James. I like the pace now for Jackson State to play very smart, penetrate pitch. Evans kicks. Oh! McKinnis and Iguodaro tied wow. up and it's out of bounds. Oh no, it... it Ends up being Marquette basketball. 16 seconds left. Ball in the hands of Stevie Mitchell. Mitchell goes. Jones cuts him off. Mitchell, corner, shot off, and it goes. They will count it, but certainly they're going to look at this one. That was really close. Yep. Lewis in the corner. Here's our first look. No, I don't think so. It looks like balls in his hand. You see the 0 0. Yeah, they're going to wave that off. I don't think so. It looks like. Yeah, red lights on, still in his hand. Red right? I don't think so. I agree with you. It's great to have that reverse look as well because you've got the, the shot clock on both sides yep. of the bucket. Go, and a little yeah. closer look at the hand. Yep, looks like it was still in his hand. No good. No, no good. good. So wave off the bucket. This was a fun first half in Milwaukee, certainly for Jackson State, maybe not so much for the Golden Eagles of Marquette. Coming up, we're headed back to New York, AT&T at the half. Jackson State even with Marquette. You're watching CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. I serve form in Milwaukee, and look at this, Jackson State at one and five. Dead even with the Big East Marquette Golden Eagles. Rich Waltz along with Pete Gillen. Someone forgot to tell Jackson State that they were big underdogs in this one. Exactly. They're playing with a big heart, a lot of courage. They're going toe to toe, tie score, rebounds even, play them right to the wall. So give a lot of credit to Jackson State with their big heart. All right, so you're a coach. What would you do adjustment wise on either side? Well, for Marquette, limit Jackson State to one shot. Jackson State has nine offensive rebounds. Marquette's very young, five freshmen. You got to rebound the ball. And for Jackson State, let the big dog eat. Get the ball to the big fella. Give him the ball. Get the ball to the big guy, McKinnis. Shoot 50 of the field. That's 
Nice finish inside. Offensive boards. Nine of them for Jackson State. You don't box them out, they make you pay. And there we go. Javius McKinnis. Yep. McKinnis, a great job. Tremendous player. Up, up, and away. That was unbelievable. That was one of the plays of the season that I've seen. Alley-oop to the moon. Block shot. Look at him. He's fired up. He's juiced. He's not here to hold hands. <laughs> no, it's not. He had four blocks. He had eight rebounds, four of them offensive boards. And neither team shot it that well. Marquette made just two threes. They need to get to the free throw line. That's where they have done their best work this year. They are averaging 18 points a game at the line. And Marquette in this first half with just five of 10 for the line. Exactly, Rich. They got to cash their free throws in. And that's been a big reason why they're six and one and beating West Virginia and Ole Miss and Illinois. It was a tremendous win for a young team. All right, we'll see the adjustments on either side. We'll see if the energy is there for either side. First five minutes in every half is crucial. So the second half, crucial for both teams. Who's going to grab the game by the throat? Marcel driving, falling away, and it drops. Rim was kind on that one. And for Marcel, his first points of the game, he's averaging 16 a night. Oh, what was the walk? Jackson State has handled the full court and half court pressure. Got a nice job with that. Jonas James. McKinnis calling for the ball. Taylor, good move. Got inside. Can't finish. Quet the rebound. Get the ball to Lewis right. and Morcel. Two veterans. Let's have a wide open shot. Jones. Whips it across. Lewis penetrates. Someone got a hand on it. Another turnover. Here comes Jackson State. Freeman takes a three and missed it short. Jackson State's not a great shooting team. They get a lot of points on rebounds and putbacks, and that's a three. And Morcel all of a sudden has opened up. Four 20 point games this year, and now five points tonight. Yeah. Terrific player. Top defensive player in the Big Ten last year. Marcel. He's got two more. Jackson State could use a timeout. Yep. And they call a timeout. 7 0 run, largest lead for Marquette to open the second half here in Milwaukee. Marquette's lead now at 7, 29-29 at the half. Daryl Morcell, terrific player in Maryland, two-time All-Big Ten, did not score in the first half, and he has opened up the second and opened up his game. Done a great job. Knocked out a three there. Here we go. Throw it up. Nice finish in traffic. Seven points. He's getting 16 points a game, so he and Justin Lewis got to take this game by the throat. Morcell, tremendous. And you know, Richie was a defensive player of the year in the Big Ten last season, so he's a leader. He's one of their glue guys and very talented. First half donuts. Second half, he's got a, a share in Dunkin' Donuts. And <laughs> that's a good one. And that's part of the puzzle for just about every coach this year is putting the puzzle together. Taylor gets it up and in. And that's nicely done out of the timeout for Jackson State. Great coach at that time, no question. Excellent coach at that time. All right, by Wayne Brent. Go for the home run. And there's Wayne there. Once again, attack to press the score. Touchdown. Rich, you do a lot of football for CBS Sports. And uh, that's that's yards after catch. Uh, and that's it. Uh, you got all the terminology. I'm just <laughs> proletariat. Much. <laughs> Marcel, this is Kovic. Five point game. Marcel again. Finds a quest. And he's uh, clobbered. Evans landed on top of him. Queth goes to the line. When Morcell gets it, this half, Rich, good things happen. Nice penetration, pump fake by Queth. Foul by Ellis. Uh oh. And Queth right now yeah. has a, a towel on his face. It wasn't intentional, it was just a pump fake. Yeah, the, the officials, there's been no, Chaka, Chaka Smart right now is asking the officials 
they have not gone to the screen to review this yep. for any flagrant. No. To me, it wasn't a flagrant possibility or just pump fake. Inside, pump fake, nice job. And foul, yeah. He went for the ball, he's behind him. Evans was behind him. Nice pump fake, Chuck Daly will be proud of that. He loves the violent pump fake. He came down, he was going for the ball. It's too bad, it was an aggressive play, but by Evans, number two. And Queth has uh, left the floor. That's too bad. And right now they're they're cleaning some of the blood off the court. That'll be somewhat of a delay while they do that. All right. All right, while well, we have a chance, let's check in with Desmond Purnell. Desmond? That's right, guys. I spoke with Shaka Smart right before the start of the second half, and he told me at the half, he told his players, you have 20 minutes to show that you are the more energetic team because that did not happen in the first half. He also told him, we have to impede JSU's progress on the backboards. Just find a body and hit him. As for JSU head basketball coach Wayne Brent, his message was simple. He said his players just have to finish it, continue to rebound the ball, continue to share the ball, and we'll be just fine. All right, thank you, Desmond. Rebounding now Marquette has one of its first rebounding advantages 23 to 21 on the boards one of the officials right now discussing with Pete Gillen at the table what transpired now they are going to go to the monitor yeah referee Mike Palou said hey looks like Queth who got hit went to the locker room he's got to uh, come out of the game so the offensive coach Marcus Mark could pick who's going to shoot the two free throws. What do you see, Coach? Well, I don't think it was a flagrant. They're not looking at that right now. Maybe they changed their mind, but I, I thought it was a, a foul, aggressive foul, yes. Pump fake, got him in the air. He went down, tried to block the shot. He, he hit him in the head, but I don't think it was malicious. That's my, my thought. I thought it was just an aggressive foul. Fortunately, he came from behind him, so he couldn't see. He went to block the shot, so. Shaka's that's calling for a flagrant one, but I don't Ken Evans Jr. At the same time, too, he also hit the backboard, and, and yeah. I, don't, I don't think they're going to go flagrant. No, on this. of course. No flagrant, and Kolick, no flag. Kolick gets to shoot the free throws. Yeah, Shaka picked, so he has Kolick, who's a terrific shooter, taking a free throw. <laughs> Offensive coach, man who got fouled, has a choice of who he wants to shoot, because he's out of the game in the locker room now getting patched up. <clears throat> lead stretches to seven. Yep. And, and this equals their biggest lead of the game. Going to their press. James. Chance Moore is in. He had a nice first half. Great ball fake. And Moore gets to the rack and is fouled. Justin Lewis with the foul. That shot fake drew the defender. Lewis came over, help side. And here's more the transfer from Wichita State. He really struggled against Indiana, but he was playing with a really bad back. 0 for 11 against Indiana from the field. Did not play in the next game at Louisiana. Drops home a free throw. Lead is six for Marquette. Zone look right now for Jackson State. Little zone changing the pace. Because right now, Marquette's really adjusting well to the. Here we go. Cohen, Cohen. He is a really good shooter, and he really hasn't been able to show it here because he's a fa facilitating everybody else. Exactly. He's got to be the playmaker, so the shot has not been falling early in the season. More throws it away. How do you attack the press? Well, 2-1-2. Two, two. Here we see 2-1-2 two, two here by Jackson State. They try to get it to the middle and attack going against the 1-2-1. One, one. All right, throw it. There's 2-1-2 two, two in the middle. 
Try to get the ball to the middle right there. Push it. All right. That's the way to try to do it. 2-1-2 two, two, and get it over. They've been successful doing it. It's a 12-3 run to open the half for Marquette. One or three, one goal. Much better on the boards. You can see Shaka Smart celebrating that offensive yep. rebound. Yep. Lewis against McKinnis. Oh, again, snooping in Igadaro. Yep. Dribble penetration's hurting him. Crowd's really in it now. McKinnis. Count it. Free throw coming. Marquette, nice penetration. They all come up on Lewis. Nice finish inside. Now for Jackson State, attack the pressure. Nice penetration. Pass by Evans. Nice finish by McKinnis. Possible three point play. Lead is nine. Little zone press. Press a pressing team. You'll be Brown, a great coach. The Atlanta Hawks and the New York Knicks said press a pressing team. Why? Because the reason with press for, excuse me, is they're not used to being pressed. A pressing team doesn't used to be impressed. So you do that, you take away some of the aggressiveness by Marquette. So I like Jackson State pressing a pressing team, Marquette. Taylor. This is James. Young, it's a difficult shot. And a good rebound. Marcel up ahead. Young takes it away. Yep. Nice drive. Lewis has the miss. Missed the putback. Kolek. Lewis spots up. Missed it. All right. The track meet now, not to the advantage of Jackson State, because they're not as deep, not as athletic, not as offensively talented as Marquette. They're gonna slow it down and try to put him to sleep. Pick your spots to run. Just can't get in the track meet. You don't have the offensive firepower, especially without Watson, Rich, as you said before. That three is off from Young. Lewis is fouled on the rebound by Igadaro. 29-29 at the half, and a nice run by Marquette for a nine-point lead. Good five-minute burst by Marquette in a nine-point lead. Let's check in with Desmond Purnell. Desmond? Guys, earlier today, Coach Mar told us spending extra time with his players away from the basketball court has gone a very long way in bringing this team together. And during the Thanksgiving holiday, they spent a lot of time together. Uh, they prepared and served meals at the local Salvation Army here in Milwaukee. Coach Mar told us a lot of life, life lessons were learned during that visit, and it ultimately strengthened their team bond. Desmond said, it's not easy for a lot of coaches right now with so many transfers coming in to build that kind of bond, and this is a great way to do it. Yep, right here in downtown Milwaukee. Right. Helping the community and it's, it's players help themselves. Down. They're very fortunate to be at Marquette and to be at Jackson State. Two great schools, and it's a great lesson and a, a great help for the community. James off the timeout, way off the window, uh, and a little too high off the window. That ball stuck. Pete, can you get up there and get that? I got good hops, but I can't quite get up there. I pulled my oblique muscle last week. I don't know where it is, but I know I pulled it. They're going to need some sort of apparatus. Iguodaro, nice push off the bench. Number 13. You know, exactly what Desmond talked about from Shaka Smart coming out of halftime, and that was energy. Bring more energy. Especially on the boards, you can see it. Mitchell with the drive. And the tip is up and in. I think it was Igadara. Yeah. Doing a nice job. The defense all converged on Mitchell. Nobody boxed out. Igadaro. So he made it. You're right, this tempo is not good for Jackson no, State. It's, it's like roller derby. Taylor <laughs> missed. Oh, oh my God. McKinnis, that ball was going up, and McKinnis 
pinned it off the glass. I, yeah. It was almost like self goaltending. <laughs> I know. Uh, right now it's getting to be a rat race, getting out of control. Jackson has got to calm down, slow it down, get the ball to McKinnis inside, some space, let him try to get fouled or get, get to the free throw line or, or make it inside basket. Here we go. You gotta have ball movement and player movement. Make the defense move. Evans switches course, spins. That's a really difficult shot. Call it. He's been outstanding here in the second half. Yeah. He's a good leader. Mitchell the corner, Joplin. Joplin. Biggest lead, 14. You see the run. A 19-5 run. McKinnis lays it in. Nice job attacking the press. 2-1-2, two, two. get it to the middle of the floor. Iguodaro. Pull it. Puts his way through, McKinnis. There's a foul, and let them play. Lewis. Jackson State shooting just 32% in the game. Joplin's three. Better the defense, certainly by Marquette. Much better defense, Rich, second half. Much better rebounding as well. They're yep. not out rebounding Jackson State yep. by three. And they're wearing them down a little bit with their physicality and their depth and their athleticism. Dylan Taylor, remember they're playing without their best score. Gabe Watson yep. is out, wrist injury. They lose 15 points a game. Guinness, that's a, a forced shot and a shot clock violation. Desmond Purnell, you've got an update. Yeah, Mar Marquette Center, Kirk right. Webb is currently on the bench right now. He spent several minutes back in the locker room receiving stitches to close up that gash he suffered earlier in the second half, but he's back on the bench right now, and he is available to return to this game. And Desmond, here was that foul on uh, Ken Evans Jr. Yeah. It was reviewed to see if the officials thought flagrant, and it was not deemed that. Good to see him back. Yep, no question. <laughs> Keep driving the ball, Marquette's packing the, the paint and then dishing it. Prosper. And he's fouled on his way to the bucket. Lewis with the reach. That's really helped Marquette dribble penetration, Rich. Jackson. Defense all converges on the ball and they dump it inside. Jackson State opened their uh, season at Illinois. Lost by double digits. Lost by two at Louisiana Tech. Lost at Marshall by 14. One at Louisiana in their last game. Joplin's three. And now Marquette has got their flow. Yep. Confidence. Another turnover. Suddenly that press is causing trouble in Iguodaro. A terrific second half. Also, Iguodaro. Defense gets their offense going. Little deflection, nice pass inside. Igadoro with the finish. Golden Eagles are flying. Omar Kent in Milwaukee. Thursday night is a really good game. St. Mary's and Utah State. St. Mary's 7-1. Utah State is 6-1, 9 Eastern. St. Mary's has beaten Notre Dame and Oregon, a six-point loss to Wisconsin. Utah State won the Myrtle Beach Invitational by beating Oklahoma by three. Also, Iguodaro. Great job. He had seven points at the half. Now he's the leading scorer in the game with 13 points. Six for six from the field. Putting on a clinic. The bench has been great for Marquette. 28 points for Marquette on the bench. Only 14 for Jackson State. I think they're wearing him down with their size and athleticism and depth. Picadaro is a freshman. 
five games last year and across the country everybody getting an, an extra year post covid so guys that were freshmen last year are oftentimes labeled as redshirt freshmen this year free throw up and good and the lead bulges now to 16 excuse me 18 keep their full court pressure now they're bringing it back a little bit one two two three quarter court press back at half court Lewis just kind of lobbed it up and then went after yeah. it nobody went after it. Ellis cut off Ball out of bounds, and it goes back to Jackson State. Jackson yep. State and Marquette were even at 29 at the half. A 19-5 run out of the second half, and Wayne Brent's Tigers haven't been able to recover. They're just three of 16 from the field, and they are turning it over at an alarming rate. Prosper. That would be energy-generating behavior. No question about it. Turnover and dunk. Moving that press back a little bit. Got to come with him. Got to help. The guy in the middle's got to come up a little bit. With a chance more. Lewis gets a foul and a bucket. Talk about energy, intensity, passion, deflection. Here we go. Push it ahead. Nice pass inside. Igadaro, it's his world. We're just passing through it, Rich. Nice finish. I think a lot of the focus for Marquette initially is going to be on the transfers. And then certainly Marcel, Kolick, Quet. But some of these freshmen are really, really good. Some of the guys that have just arrived here for Shaka Smart. I saw Cam Jones play good minutes in the first half. Stevie Mitchell has played really well off the bench. Yep. Godaro is a, listed as a freshman. Yep. We told you about uh, Justin Lewis. Godaro whips it into the corner. Prosper. Gets inside and scores. Olivier Maxens Prosper, the Canadian transfer from Clemson. Turnover caused by Ellis. And a foul on Jonas James. I get a timeout now. I'm Coach Mike Brent. Mike Brent. Try to calm him down a little bit, Coach Brent. Back in is Javius McKinnis. Marion Ellis, another freshman, Iowa Player of the Year in high school. Has length, 6'5". Yep. The energy, Rich, in the second half of Marquette has been really stifling. Lewis called for the ball. Prosper. Ellis gets the screen. And McKinnis. Comes in, swoops up, gets the rebound. He's just a point shy of a double-double. He's got nine points, 11 rebounds, and four blocks. Evans on a cut. Transfer from Oklahoma, great steal. James gets it back. Evans is open for the three. Marcel. Not sure if he was shooting or not, but he was fouled. Yep. And he's going to shoot two. Can of corn up in the air. Yep, he's trying to shoot. Good call. Marquette in the in the Big East preseason poll was picked ninth in what looks like a really good Big East. Yep. This year. 11 teams to pick night. I think they're better than that. Once again, they're young. They're going to get better and better and better. Villanova, UConn, Xavier, St. John's, the first four. Yep. 
<laughs> my old school Providence, one of my old schools, they're pretty good. Rich, I saw them practice the preseason. Uh, Nate Watson's a wrecking machine in the low post. Providence beat Wisconsin at Wisconsin, as you know, so they're going to be hooked up too. Marquette's going to open up Big East play on the 18th at Xavier. Tough game. Every game's a battle in the Big East for sure. And then UConn comes in here right before Christmas. Moore misses the three. <laughs> McKinnis gets his double double yep. emphatically. Scores 30 to 11 right now in the second half. Marquette. But this is dissolved into an up tempo game, and that's just wrecked Jackson yep. State. Yep. And credit, credit Shaka Smart and Marquette for that. Yep. Marcel with the foul. And we see missed shot, followed by McKinnis. Send it home, big fella. Tremendous player. Double-double machine. You can see why. He's quiet, but he has on the court. He's a terminator when he's on the court. You mix Gabe Watson back into this oh, boy. team. He's averaging 15 a game. And you can see this is going to be a really good team in the SWAC. They were picked third in the preseason yep. poll. They won it. They won the regular season last year. They lost in the SWAC tournament. Right. Semifinals at Texas Southern. They're going to be a force to be heard from, especially Chance Moore, the free throw shooters. Terrific player. McKinnis, and as you mentioned, Watson. So they got some, some talent. They'll be right there. Got a chance to go to the big dance. Got a great coach in Wayne Brent. Don't, don't count him out. Little zone now, 2-1-2 two, two zone by Jackson State. Just try to slow the tempo down a little bit. The second half has been the best half this year for Marquette. Lewis is fouled before the shot. We told you they beat Illinois, number 10 in the country. They beat Ole Miss and they beat West Virginia. They were down double digits in all three of those games. And that's a great credit to the players and to the coaching staff and the grit and determination of the Marquette players. Lewis. He worked on his three-point shot, Rich, all summer. Evans throws it away. Catch. Catch. Jones, finish. Looks like a heck of a football player. Throw the bomb. You said Jackson State wanted this game in the 50s, and Marquette is headed for the 80s oh. or the 90s. At this tempo. Not a good throw. Evans stepped out of bounds. Time out in Milwaukee. Pete football Gillen. season, Rich. You're a great football announcer. Also, here we go. Get the rebound. Kolek pushing way ahead. Assist man. Nice finish. Jones with the finish. They're flying. Golden Eagles flying high into the sky. Nice finish with the left hand. <laughs> well done, coach. was not into it. Credit to Jackson State, but Marquette, big time run and a nice comfortable lead. Pete Gillen, second half adjustments revisited. Well, Jackson State let the big dog eat. Well, six points in the second half. Right, that's not enough. They need more. A lot one shot only, but second chance points a lot. But right now, uh, Jackson State's got eight second chance points. So uh, they can do a better job on both ends. But the, the key is the turnovers. All right, we had nine turnovers right now in the second half by Jackson State. That's the message. The turnovers are killing them. Credit the defense by Marquette, their pressure defense. They're getting, the defense is getting their offense going and getting layups. I think one of the things that uh, Shaka Smart has to be happy about 
certainly not the first half but the the bench which was really good against Northern Illinois has shown up again here yep. and been excellent and they've kind of fueled this run yeah yeah bench has real, been real big for Marquette they got a lot of depth a lot of talented guys they shock a smart outstanding coach he's gonna bring the glory years back to Marquette not gonna happen overnight you got a young guys but it'll happen. Hicks, or excuse me uh, Cam Jones 66-42, Marquette leads, seven and a half left. They're staying in a one, two, two, three, quarter, quarter press. They're bringing it back, Richard. They're bringing it back more to half court. Less ground to cover, so that's been a good adjustment by Coach Shaka Smart. Jones leaves it. McKinnis, another rebound. Double digits for him. Hicks forced it. Quet outlet. All right, how do you handle this if you're if you're either coach? And there's seven minutes left. The game feels like it's in hand for Marquette. Yeah, well now you just play smart, play the combination, give some guys that don't get a chance to play, give them a cup of coffee. Uh, you know, and, and for Jackson State, you keep swinging. We're playing for tonight, but also for the future. We're trying to get better, get ready for conference play coming up in January. We realize we're playing a, an excellent team that's in their home floor. Played a great first half, just second half. Marquette came out of the gates, really energized, and the defense really fueled a lot of easy baskets. So let's work on our offense, Jackson State. Let's try to get the ball to our best player. Try to get the ball to McKibbins. Chance Moore. There he goes, get it home. And McKinnis, nice job by Moore to set it up yep. and set it in motion. Yep. Dribble penetration, the defense all came up on Chance Moore. We got the ball inside. The McKinnis, a nice finish. Keep doing that. Swing it, Rich, side to side. Put your head down, drive. Defense all converges on you. Then look to hit the open man. Kolick with a uh, offensive foul. McKinnis now 13 and 13. Yep. With four blocks and two steals. Moore is a tough guard. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Hook it with the hand. First personal. The chicken wing. Yep. Yep, chicken wing. But here we go. Yep, a nice call with the left hand by Chance Moore. Can't take a chance with that move. No way. Marquette's schedule very ambitious so far. And about to actually get tougher here in the oh, next yeah. two weeks. It's murderous row, Rich, next time. Lewis. Oh! Wet. Wet. Transfer from Oklahoma, fifth year player. All patched up. Remember, he went yep. into the locker room. Yep. <laughs> Foul. McKinnis. Foul. He went out. No blood, no foul. No. Well, he already bled quite a bit. He got bled. Oh, they they stopped it. <laughs> Referee want to get home and see Lauren order reruns or something. That's uh, rich. They don't call walks anymore. I'm going to put ice on my head. I'm getting a headache. 68 44. 525 left. Justin Lewis, nobody box out. Quit throwing it home. They love this guy. I mean, they really yeah. just love this guy in this program. Yep. Transfer from Oklahoma. Just an incredible path to get here. Escaped civil war in Sudan. His, yep. his family escaped to Egypt. They were homeless for a while. Right. Then they relocated and came to the U.S. in Salt Lake City. Found not only a home, but also the game of basketball. And he's had a really nice run. He's a six-year. Wonderful story. Great success story. Very happy for the young man and his family. And Marquette's at Wisconsin. We've talked about that game, number 23, Wisconsin, on Saturday. But then they go to Kansas State. UCLA comes in here. UCLA, number five in the country. Ellis driving. Those are three brutal games for a young team, Rich. But they've handled it so far. I mean, they beat Illinois. Yep. At home here. Yep. And two games on a neutral site with great wins. West Virginia, Bob Huggins has a, another terrific team, and Ole Miss is very good. So two great wins. Stevie Mitchell. 
And then it gets real with the Big East coming Savior in here in Yukon. The Big East. Now remember that the Big East has gone, they did last year, to 20 games in the regular season. When I coached in the Big East, Rich, we had 18 league games, which is murder. Add two more, just the emotional, the, the, the physical, the stress. You can play another great team, say from out of your conference, and it's a, a tough game, but it's not as emotionally draining and physically draining as a Big East game. Lewis. Pretty balanced scoring sheet for Marquette tonight. Igadara has led the team with his 14. He's the only guy in, in double digits. Lewis now with eight. Cam Jones, who got the start tonight, has eight. Queth has eight. Morcel has eight. And Stevie Mitchell has seven. Okay. Oh! Jones in the game with the catch of the finish. Jamarcus okay. Jones getting some run here. Yep. Transfer out of Southern University. Yeah. That's smart, I think. Get McKinnis out of the game, your best player. You want him to get banged up, right, when the game's decided, right? Uh, your first team All League player in the swag, Javier McKinnis. Well, he, he's already done big right. time work 13 points, 14 rebounds. Yep. There he is right there, McKinnis. Great player, tremendous young man. I talked to him briefly after practice and quiet, humble, doesn't say much. He just. Works his brains out, tremendous player, and, and Marquette rested Justin Lewis, who's another outstanding player. You don't want anybody to get hurt any time, but your franchise guys, you got to be careful with. And he's our candidate to play in that uh, All-Star game. That yes, no question. Oh, yeah. All-Star game at the final four, which will be on CBS. That's right. I think we can write it in. Yeah, he certainly deserves to be, in my recognition. I mean, he's Second leading rebound in the country last year. Country's pretty big, Rich. Right? <laughs> 13 rebounds. I mean, yes, you travel it all. What you know. 358 <laughs> Division I teams, I believe, this year. That's a lot of basketball teams. No question, Rich. You've seen them all. Almost. Under four minutes, 72-46. Marquette. 72-46. Jackson State, Marquette. We're talking about the... HBCU All-Star Game that will be on CBS from New Orleans during the Final Four. They named legends and named positions after them. And a lot of these names are from the 60s and the 70s. Dick Barnett, Earl Monroe, Ben Wallace, Rick Mahorn. Bobby Dandridge in this town is certainly celebrated. That 71 World Championship team with uh, Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, of course, Oscar Robertson, Bobby Dandridge. I think Lucius Allen was a, a guard on that team. Yep. A friend of mine, Yubi Brown, was an assistant on that team in 1971. Uh, and uh, a great coach, tremendous coach, with the Knicks, the Atlanta Hawks, assistant with Larry Costello was the head coach. And uh, did a great job. What? Dandridge, one of the uh, retired numbers, 69 through 77. John McLaughlin, another terrific player, role yep. player on that team. Dandridge, McLaughlin, and obviously Alcindor to become Jabbar the next year. Kareem was so good. Yep. And they won that championship 50 years later. Unbelievable. They, they win another Oscar. one. This town was just, I mean, this town is happening right now. The Brewers are really good. The Bucks are outstanding. World champions. The catch re-energized now. They're going to be good. Summerfest is back. At least I hope. Great music festival here in Milwaukee. If you haven't been to Milwaukee lately, you need to get here. The, the, the entire down, downtown and the, the third ward area really is a, a great town, great restaurants, great places to stay, come in. Yeah, it is a great city. Hardworking people, you know, they really love their sports. And don't forget the Packers. That's right. Right? That's, everybody loves the Packers. See, that's part of the DNA. It's a great time to yep. be a sports fan in this Milwaukee area. 
starting to get two big time basketball programs. Certainly Marquette and then Wisconsin. Uh, they certainly have an excellent team also on the part of the state. And they meet on Saturday. Yep. Yep. There's a couple of guys that fired up. You left tickets for them. I know, those are my mentors. <laughs> That's why I'm here on Boot Hill, so maybe they were as good as I thought they were going to be. Jones tries to get inside, and he's fouled. Nicodaro now also has got 14 points and 10 rebounds. Yep. That's his first career double-double. You get a sense that that's just the first of what could be a lot before he's done here. Yeah, very good player. This is Jamarcus Jones. Jackson State, look, you got a feel for them. They haven't had a home game yet. They're not going to have a home game until the end of December. They've been on the road forever. They're going to tour Iowa, barnstorm through Iowa State, Northern Iowa, and Drake, stop off at Illinois State, and then closer to home, Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, 12 straight road games to open up their season. And they really played well in the first half. They played tremendous. Coach Wayne Brent, we were talking to him today, you and I, he said he never had 12 straight in a row. He had 9 or 10, but this is the first, so uh, they'll learn from it. They're going to be a very good team in the conference. Oh, uh, didn't quite go as planned. Prosper couldn't handle. No. Nope. Off the Mitchell lob. Two and a half minutes left. Tight game blew up in the second half. Tor takes the three. Remember, Jackson State hit some threes early. But they are four of 16 from distance. And Marquette, look, great wins to start things. With Illinois, Ole Miss, West Virginia. The Wisconsin game. They're number 23, UCLA's number five. Road game at Kansas State. Xavier, UConn. And then at St. John's to finish the month. Those are six brutal games, Rich. Arguably, since they got some road games, they might not be the favorite in any of them. They can win any of them, but right now, that's six tough games. That'll tell us a big story about the Golden Eagles for this season. Amarian Ellis, offensive foul. Nice feed, Young, with the left hand. Our basketball historian tonight, Dom Catronio points out. Seven and one is gonna be the best start since back in the 2011-2012 season. When they were 10 and 0 under Buzz Williams, Jay Crowder was on that team. So something to look for for Shaka Smart. Blending in these four transfers with a really young roster. Great recruiting class. Really connects with the players very well, Rich. We talked to him this afternoon at the shoot around, and uh, he, he wanted putting the staff together. He wanted coaches that were good with relationships, that reach out to players, that can connect with players, that would spend time with players off the court. Well, he uh, talked about you know some of his uh, influences, guys coming up. Yep, Billy Donovan, Keith Dambrock, Oliver Purnell. Yep. Keith Dembrot, really great respect for Keith. He's at Duquesne now, head coach there. Marquette getting ready to clear their bench. Prosper drops in a three. And as I thought, coach, they did get to the 80s. Yep. Well, defense got him going. All right. If you're not making threes in the first half, two for nine, 22%, you send it home. Nice finish by Quinn. Inside, Igadaro. Boom, again and again. I've seen this replay before. Boom. Throwing it home. Everybody's into the act. Prosper. The dunk is on Quinn. Dunk City. 
29 points in the first half, 52 points in the second half for Marquette. Michael Kennedy is in. Brendan Carney is in off the bench for Marquette. What? Cameron Brown. So the walk ons, guys that run the scout team. Yep. It's great get, when they get in, Rich. I was a walk on many years ago, right on the Russian Revolution at Fairfield. And, uh, Got a scholarship my last two years, but it, hey, walk ons work just as hard as the players. They're not as talented, right? But they miss vacation time. They miss a lot of things. So it's great when they get in for a little time. I'll bet that was a big day. Oh, nice move. Raising up Marion Ellis. I'll bet that was a big day in the, in the Gillen household when they gave you the scholarship. Oh, yeah. Was my it a dad, surprise? Oh, yeah. It was a surprise. Uh, my, uh, my dad, you know, worked seven days a week to put three kids through college. So I was lucky to full scholarship my last two years. And I was very fortunate. Young misses. Scramble for the ball. Lewis steals. Oh, no foul. Oh, no. Somebody get hurt. And crashing hard was Marion Ellis. He's back up on his feet. It's great to keep competing, but game decided, right? Let him go. Ellis has played some good minutes. I know he's in at the end, yep. but he's been in for much of this second half run. Yep. He's a competitor. <clears throat> well, Ket's got a lot of depth. Shock is really connected with the students, went around and talked to them at the dorms and everything. So good student group at every home game. Yeah, they want the walk-ons to score. They, they want they want some of these guys that are just got in, like sure. Carney to get some couple of looks. Yeah. Brown looking for Carney. They tried to get it to him. Oh. Jones can't finish. Took it back. And Young. Well, look, keep your ears open in March in that SWAC tournament because Jackson State is going to be one of the better teams in that conference. And that's a possibility for them to get dancing in March. But Shaka Smart, best start since 2011, 2012, seven and one. They did not have a great first half. They have a terrific second half. Like you said, Jackson State's got a lot to look forward to. They're going to have a heck of a league in a, a SWAT conference. But Marquette is a young team. Never kid a dog when he's very young, because when he grows up, he can buy shit. First half, not a bad wake-up call for Wisconsin this weekend. No question about it. That'd be a great game. 83-54, the final here. For Pete Gillen, Desmond Purnell, our entire CBS crew, Rich Waltz in Milwaukee. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. On to New York. Let's hand it off. It's a break stone.